So as we know, health is very, very important. Our people say health is wealth. None of it's our people or people say, well, health is wealth because if you're healthy, you're wealthy. Health is, is one of those resources we have that cannot be bought with money, cannot be duplicated. Can, there is no, um, there's no second body you have. You, your body is one. So it's one of those things, if you look after it, it will serve you well. If you don't look after it, you'll have problems. So it's, it's, it's very, very, very important. Now we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it in respect to marriage, pre-marriage, and we're also going to talk about a little bit after marriage. Okay? So health is well-being, spirit, soul, and body. But we're going to be talking about um, soul and body. A bit of the soul. So we'll talk a little bit about mental health. And then we will talk about physical health, which is where we're going to zero in on. Um, health, where it comes to marriage, I'd say full disclosure is very important at this stage. Because um, by when you have agreed to marry, you've met with your pastors, you've met with your parents, and you've agreed to marry. There should be full disclosure of any health issues. Marriages can be annulled, I'm sure you know, can be annulled if health issues come to light after the marriage that will have a bearing on the other party. For instance, if one of one of the parties, you know, one of the two of the, one, the two individuals are involved in the marriage. So if one individual, for instance, um, hides, let's say that the person has HIV or has herpes, hides that the person has maybe is a sickle cell carrier, hides that you, the person doesn't, let, probably maybe, let's say, doesn't have ovaries or doesn't have fallopian tube, that kind of thing. Maybe you had a problem in the past and had surgery and moved it, or you had a cancer in the past. This happens in this in these areas, in these parts. You had cancer in the past and uh, had radiotherapy, chemotherapy, whatever, had surgery, and removed your ovaries or removed your uterus or your womb or whatever. Or you've had recurrent ectopic pregnancies and have had to had, have your fallopian tubes resected. If it comes to light after marriage, you didn't discuss these things before marriage and it comes to light after marriage, then the marriage can be annulled. The, 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 of, the offended party can go to the church or to the court of law and say, this was what was wrong with my partner. I didn't know about it. If I knew about it, I may have changed my mind. And now I know about it. I feel um, I have been deceived or this has been fraudulent and I'm no longer interested. The marriage can be annulled, it can be called a no marriage. So full disclosure is very important when it comes to health. So if there's anything, anything you know you know about, what you, if it's something you don't know, then that's okay. But if it is something you, you already know, and you know that it will cause trouble, or it would, it would bring about some difficulty or the other within the marriage, you need to make it known. In saying that, anything you don't know, or will not, for instance, let's say the, the woman in the, in, in the marriage has had one or two termination of pregnancies, um, but they were uncomplicated, maybe has gone for tests and everything is clear. Depending, it's not a must you must disclose. It's not, it's not a must if it is not going to have any bearing the, if you didn't have any bearing on your health, I do not have any bearing on the marriage. Depending, depending. But something like that, I don't. If you've had an STD in the past and was and you were treated fully, completely, and you didn't have any complications following, you've had tests and you're all clear. You don't have to say, oh, I had, I was treated for STD and this one, I was treated for the other one, and I was treated for the other one. If you're sure you were treated on time and everything is clear, but if you want to tell. That's fine. It depends on your level of communication. Pastor talked about it. Yes. Depends on your level of communication and how much trust and love you have for each other. But full disclosure is best. People say honesty is the best policy. Believe me, in marriage it is the best policy because if you give your spouse any reason to doubt your your integrity or or that you're honest, then you would have problems going forward. It would be very difficult for him to believe what you say. When you say something, you see, you you ask it again, you ask it again, you go and check and all that. And it it can make you feel a bit bad about it. Okay. So 
full disclosure, very important. The other things that are important in premarital, there are some churches that you have to have your genotype done, hepatitis B, HIV, um, blood group, and things like that. I think they're all very important. In fact, if, if you are a sickle cell carrier, so if you or AS, usually, these are, I have cousins and I have friends who, who are carriers, when they meet people, potential partners, one of the first things they do before they commit their heart is to ask, are you AS, are you AA, what are you? You, you could say that's premature, but believe me when I say that having a child with sickle cell is one of the most challenging things anyone can go through. Having a child with sickle cell can destroy a marriage. It can destroy a marriage. So you have to count the cost. Some people have done it and some people have gotten away with it. In those cases, I would say, especially they are Christians, it, it is the way God planned it. But you have to sit down and count the cost. So genotype is extremely important. Of course, HIV and hepatitis B, very, very important because these are sexually transmitted and are chronic diseases. So as we all know, HIV has no cure. It can be managed, but there is no cure. And it is a progressive and a deteriorating disease. So it's a disease that would progress. Thank God these days that um, with medication and the right lifestyle, people can live on with it for decades. It didn't used to be the case. Hepatitis B is even is even more, I'd say is even is even more problematic because if it can cause liver damage, permanent liver damage, and it can predispose to liver cancer. So hepatitis B is 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 a biggie. It's one of the things you, you really, really, really need to um and if you if you do the test and you're you're, you're negative, it it is worth um being um immunized. There's some immunization for hepatitis B and there are three and once you take them you 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 have immunity for life. So if you can do those um hepatitis B injections that would be great. Um other things you can discuss is family history. I'm sure you know that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. I'm sure you know that the spirit that works in us is the spirit of God. And we, we have the life of God in us. We have the lineage of God in us. So we do not believe that we will carry on diseases from our parents. So you can use the prayer altar and destroy any pre-existing diseases. You can destroy any familial diseases, so diseases that um, occur within your family. You can you can um, nullify all those things. However, because we are still in the flesh, we know that our bodies are still predisposed, can still be predisposed to these chronic diseases like diabetes, like hypertension. When you are young, you don't concentrate because you feel, oh, I'm still young, I can eat whatever I like. The sooner excuse me, the sooner we develop a healthy lifestyle, the easier it is for us when we get on. So if you know your father, your uncle, your grandfather had diabetes, had high, has hypertension, had cancer, had any of, has any of these or suffered any of, with any of these or had problems, it is good to be aware so that when you are praying and when you are declaring, you know what you're declaring. But it's also good for you to begin to develop a healthy lifestyle. So eating the right things, staying away from very salty and sugary processed food or eating them in moderation um, regular exercise drinking loads of water and having regular checkups very very important so these are the things you can do to minimize um, family health problems you, you can check from time i'll say maybe every two or three years for a man who is below 40 I'd say who is below 35. So you can check. Every year will be excellent, but if you could do every two years, that's fine. But you should check your blood pressure at least once a year if you're below 35. Once you're above 35, you should do it every year. But to keep your health up, make sure you're eating correctly, eating right. When we say eating right, so you're, you're, you reduce salt in your diet, you reduce sugar and processed food, 
vegetables, fruit, lots of water, calcium, all these are very important. Eating at the right times, not eating late at night, not skipping meals. Always make sure if you can eat three, three small meals is better than eating one large meal. So if you can eat breakfast, at least have a cup of tea, maybe a slice of toast, whatever it is. Afternoon, have a sandwich, whatever you want to eat in the afternoon, fine. Evening, around six, seven, you can have something small again. It's, it's healthy. You can have in between snacks, but the healthier, the better. Okay, the sooner we, you, you, you get yourself into the rhythm of having a healthy diet, the easier it is for you. And easier you see to be for you when you have children. Because if you bring up children in an environment where people eat properly, you see they, they, they will not be addicted to sugar. They won't always want sweets and crisps and biscuits and things like that. So it, it's very important. The other thing is your environment. The, your environment also impacts on your health. So where you are um, impacts on your health. So where, wherever it is you live, make sure that it's a healthy environment. Make sure, especially when you're having children, you want to live in a safe environment. You want to live in a healthy environment. You make sure you check on, you know, your taps. Make sure that the house is well maintained. In this country, for instance, every um, every year or so, they will come and do a Legionella check. They want to make sure that, say, you know, drains and things. We don't have very, you know, dangerous bogs growing in different places that can be detrimental to your health. So the houses are well regulated here. Not so much in Nigeria, but um, make sure the environment is clean. You're not predisposed to... Um, is, um, any anything that would be detrimental to your health. Um, usually here, having a GP is not a problem. So you always have a doctor that you can go to at any time. In Nigeria, you might need to um, actively get a doctor. So you might need to actively um, register with a practice or some a doctor that sees you, knows your medical history, knows about you, and um, can, can give a medical record or um, a medical report about you. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Do I need to let you know about blood pressure measurements and things? All those things are important, but I'd say leave it in the hands of your doctor. Um, maintain a good body weight. It's good to know your BMI. So it's good to know, have an idea of what you what you weigh. That would help you to know: Am I eating too much? Am I eating too little? Am I maintaining a good weight? Very, very important. I would speak shortly about restless compatibility, and what this means is is. Um, the blood group, it's important for you to know what your blood group is. People are either restless positive or restless negative. Sometimes this has a bearing in um, in pregnancy because if father is restless negative and mother is restless positive and she's pregnant and the baby, the baby is, um, is positive, there's usually, there's usually um, an incompatibility between the mother's blood and the baby's blood. And this can cause problems in pregnancy, can cause abortions, there's miscarriages, and um, things like that. So it's important for you to know what your restless, your restless um, status is. Very, very important for you to know. Um, now, mental health-wise, usually we don't have those, we, you know, we, we don't have those issues, but your mental health is very important. Your mental health is very important for your well-being. If your mental, if you you're not okay in your in your in your mind, if your mind is not at peace, if you suffer things from like anxiety or depression or or, or obsessive compulsive disorders, things like that, it would affect on your function. It would affect your physical health. So it's good to have that in, in your horizon. And how do you keep a good mental health? I'd say by having someone to talk to, have family. If you have problems, sort them out. Don't foster problems in your mind. Don't spend your time ruminating over your past and what you've done and what you haven't done. We don't have those issues most of the time because we know who we are and we have God who, who, who we can talk to. We know that all things work together for our good. We know that God is working things out all the time. So we don't, we don't normally have that problem. But if you find yourself feeling um, very sad, or if you find yourself being withdrawn, or if you find yourself just not functioning in the, in the right way, or you've lost your peace, it's good to find someone to talk to. It always helps. So the key for mental health is recognize when you need help and get the help. That's very important. Don't let anything 
to foster. It's when you let it to, to lie, let, let it foster for a long time. Then you begin to have have issues with, with mental health. I'll speak shortly about early pregnancy and family planning. Family planning is very, very important. And it starts before marriage. Before marriage, it's good for you to sit down, have a discussion. When do we want children? Do we want them immediately? Do we want to wait six months? Do we want to wait one year? So family planning starts before marriage. You ask yourself these important questions. Because believe me when I say a child will change your life. A child will change your schedule. A child will change your financial balance. A child will change everything about you. So it's something you should think about. It's something you should plan for. It's something you should plan for. So many people don't take this into consideration. We get married, we're all very excited. We have a baby immediately. And they start finding it difficult. Children are expensive, especially in the West. Children are expensive, childcare is expensive. Um, it's something you need to sit down and consider. After your marriage, after you, you, you've worked, in fact, you can start now and um, look at your finances, look at where you are. So you consider your job, you consider your, that's your employment status, you consider the distance you, from your house to your job, you consider um, what's going to happen when you have the child, maternity, who is going to stay at home with the child, um, is the child, are you going to start work after um, four months or five months? Um, are you in school for those who are schooling? So there are loads and loads of things to consider when you're planning for a child. So it's something you need to plan properly. In this country, you find that many pregnancies are planned. And when pregnancies are planned, you, the truth is, the woman is happier, the family is happier. Um, th things don't just, things will always come up. But because it's planned, you're more prepared for, for what, what, is, what is coming. You're more prepared, you have the room ready, you have money ready, you buy the things the child needs before the child comes. It's not as frustrating financially as it would be if it just springs up on you and you know you don't know what to do. So family planning is very important before marriage. Decide on when you want the baby to come. You're happier when this baby comes after you have planned. And the baby is happier. The baby is, is, is more comfortable, the baby is better looked after. And babies that are, are born from a blood brand, I'm not saying they're not happy, but it's more stressful. It, it's much more stressful. The one is much more, it's less, it's much more irritable. The man is much more irritable. It's it's a difficult dynamic. So instead of it to be a happy time, it's it's a difficult time. So it's good to plan. After your first baby, you put another plan in place. When do we want a second baby? So if you're not, we're not ready for a baby in the next one or two years, then you make a plan that in the next one or two years, we would put in this, this um, contracept, contraceptive option so that we won't have another baby in the next two years. It's always very difficult and shocking when you see a, a woman who's just had a baby and because they haven't planned, a few months down the line, she finds herself pregnant again. I've seen it so many times. It happens so many and And, you know, the woman just, oh, I don't know how it happened. We, we don't know how it happened because they didn't plan. They probably didn't have the information. Some people felt, feel, oh, I'm breastfeeding, so I won't get pregnant. No longer so. Many times, people, even though they're breastfeeding, can still get pregnant. So it's good to have a proper plan. I would very briefly talk about contraceptive methods. So we have the barrier methods, condoms, diaphragm, and things like that. So those are, are methods that you, you where you put a barrier so that the sperm doesn't get into the, the fallopian tubes. So you put a barrier in um, in these ones. And these, these methods are quite effective, are quite effective. Um, I don't have all the percentages out here, but condom is quite effective. It can burst, it can slip off and things like that. So you, you have to be aware of that, but it is effective. Um, it has its, its drawbacks to some people say it doesn't feel very natural. Um, some people just don't like it. Some people are allergic to latex condoms and things like that. So it has its drawbacks, but it is effective. Um, of course, there is the, the the one the safe period, and this one many people who don't agree with contraception use this, like the Catholics. 
um, they don't agree with contraception because they feel it's unnatural to prevent pregnancy or even sinful to prevent pregnancy. So um, there is the um, the safe period where you count, you 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 find you you check you, you start to count from when your period comes. You know which ones are your safe days. You know which ones are your unsafe days and things like that. It's called Billings method. It works, but it can be trusted. It works, but it can be trusted. So. Um, I'd say it's not very reliable if you are sure I don't have a baby it's not it's not one you can trust um, there are things like spermicides those ones are used in used with condoms um, they kill sperm cells some people are also not very comfortable with them they're like um, foams um, and of course there are hormonal methods like the peel so these are um, little medicines you take every day every day every day and um, you have a break and then you take so there, there, there are different types there are some that are um, um combined so we have the combined combined ones um we have the so we have combined oral contraception so that one has estrogen and progesterone we have the progesterone only called the mini pill um we have the implants which you put into your arm and those ones those ones are long lasting and i think can last up to four years or so uh, we have um intrauterine devices that are hormonal based there's one called mirena and that one also if you put it in that one sits inside your uterus it would um, also prevent you getting pregnant these ones are more um definitive ways of contraception these are the ones you put in and you're sure nothing is going to happen they're quite effective they're injectables um their patches each there, there are so many and they all have their advantages and disadvantages so what i'd say is read widely um, you can go to a family planning clinic if you if you want any of them they will give you leaflets they'll give you information booklets which you can study and read they all have their advantages they all have the disadvantages so you you will decide on which one you want also bear in mind that different ones work for different people i know some people who have tried the intrauterine contraceptive device which is one of like the copper tea which is like a copper coil which you put into your your um, uterus which the doctor puts into your uterus i i know a number of people who have tried it and it hasn't worked well with them it's either caused bleeding or spotting or pain severe pelvic pain and it has just not worked for them and they've had to take it out but other people take put it in and it stays for years and years and years and they don't have a problem so it's to find the one you want and then find the one that works for you um and of course they are the permanent um family planning methods and these ones are used when you have completed your family i dare say there are some people who use them who do not want to have children so there are some people who absolutely have made up their minds we do not want children and they would have these um surgeries you know so there's one for them the the um female tubal ligation where they snip the tubes and tie them up or the vasectomy where you snip the spermatic cord and um tie it up so in these ones these ones are permanent permanent um i wouldn't say they are absolutely irreversible because i know there are some surgeries that don't to reverse them and some have proved successful but it is very minimal so these ones you use when you are sure you've, you're done with having children and you're sure we will no matter what happens i do not want any more children so that's when you consider these ones they're also used in people who've had lots of children within a short time so maybe someone who's had three sets of triplets or three sets of twins and um you know you've had you've, you've had more children than you you expected you might still be young but just because i'm done and i don't want to have any more children so the permanent contraceptions i use i'll also talk about emergency contraception this is handy this is handy um, so this is used when, for instance, if you're using safe period, you're using safe period and um, maybe somehow something happened on a day you're not safe or on a day you're not sure if you're safe. So you must take this pill within 48 hours of sexual intercourse. You must take it within 48 hours, not later than 72 hours, I'd say. Some people say up to 96 hours, but I would say 48 hours. Take it and it's fine this um some people think it, it's it's like um an abortion pill it's not an abortion pill 
So what it will do is it will prevent conception from taking place. So conception is when the sperm meets the egg. So it will prevent conception from taking place. It does not cause an abortion. It doesn't cause an abortion. It, it prevents concep- con- conception. Okay. So it is quite, it's quite effective. I can attest it. it's quite effective. And um, yeah. So in conclusion, health is very important. Very, very important. Take your health seriously. Take care of yourself. You will find that in marriage and with work and with everything, you will be so busy, especially for the woman. You'll be juggling work, juggling children, juggling the home. It it can be very, very busy and you might ignore your health. You might even ignore meals. I'll encourage you to to keep your health in check. I'll encourage you to always... I would say listen to your body, but I'd say understand your body. Know when you need rest. Know when you need to eat. Know when you need to drink enough more water. No, no, no. Give your body what is good for it. So eat nutritious meals, drink loads of water, exercise, rest when you need to. It, 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 as a woman, you see that it's increasingly difficult to do but it's not impossible to do. And that's safe for the man. I think the men have more rests. Um, support your wife. So give your wife the support she needs. When you see she's working very hard, she's cooking all day, she's not, give her a day off and say, okay, on this day, um, I'll do the dishes, I'll take care of the kids. Why don't you lie in? You know, on on, on this weekend, we'll take care of, 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 of the cleaning of the house. We'll do this and that to help you. And why don't you have a rest? in that you would see that you would you would should be rejuvenated she would be stronger and she'd be able to meet all and um, the the requirements you have of her uh, once in a while her birthday on the anniversary send her to the spa and she gets a good massage has a nice dinner does her nails and things like that and and you, you'll be the better for it you're the one who will enjoy it if your wife is healthy you 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 you, you, you it's great you have everything done things work like a clock but you find if your wife is not healthy, you would be her carer. It's difficult. The children would would, would have um, deficiencies, and it's it, it's not easy. In the same way, you also look after your husband. For the women, look after your husband. Make sure he's feeding well. Make sure he's eating healthy. Remove things that you know will not cont- do any. Give, I mean, will not contribute to his health. So the ice creams, and you find he's someone who likes those ice cream, biscuit, coke. Then don't buy them. Make sure they're not anywhere in the home you know have healthier snacks at home buy healthier give healthier options and reduce massively reduce those things that are not healthy reduce them as i said the earlier you develop a healthy eating habit the better for the whole family so that is the premarital clinic God bless you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and look at the other, other masterclasses on relationship that I have. And very soon I'm going to have a masterclass on um, success coming soon. So you make sure you hit me up. Subscribe to my channel so you get a notification whenever a new class is uploaded. God bless you.